So you want to start animating, but you don't know what keyframes are? I'm about to show you what they are. And even if you know what keyframes are, I'll show you how to actually use them in Cinema 4D. I'm Alexei from Ace Fighter Studios and let's get started. So let's get started. I'm using my Mia character rig, but you can go to my website and download Bodhi or Beefy and follow along. So keyframes, let's get an object. Let's get this object here. Now to set a keyframe, we have this little key button here. I'm gonna make these icons a bit bigger so you can see them. This one here is a little key. And if we press it, we have this little dot over here. Let's make this 90 frames. This is this little dot and you can drag it around, click and drag on it. Now, um, this has recorded the position of this object. As you can see here, if you go to coordinates, you select the actual, there you go. See these little red dots? These red dots indicated that you have recorded this information. You've recorded its X and Y, Z position, its X and Y, Z and scale and rotation. Now, and it recorded all these things because we have these things here turned on. If we go undo, or if we just delete this keyframe here, and we select this object again, you'll see all the stuff is yellow, not red, which means there's no keyframes. It could also be gray. Yellow just means there is a animation track, which I'll tell you about later, but there's no keyframes here. So if we move this guy also, you'll see that the coordinates change. So, and if we rotate it, um, let's lock that guy. Let's lock this. Let's just make a new one so we can always see it. So you see the rotation changes as well. So if we keyframe here, and then we move to keyframe 12 and move it up here and rotate it, and we do another keyframe. Now you can see it moves between those two keyframes and you can click and drag them to move them in closer or further. So it's a slow move. I press F8 to play, by the way, it's play button here. Or if we drag this in here, nice and close, and then we press play, you'll see it quickly moves up there. So that's the base of keyframes. And you can also do this manually. Like for example, uh, let's find something here. We have some user data here on our legs. We have user data in the controls here. We have this ball rotate. Now, as you can see, if we put this guy here and we press the little keyframe key, you don't get any red dots here because it just keyframed the coordinates. Uh, these parameters you have to cut, you have to keyframe manually. So sample ball rotate here, we can press this little button and see it goes a little red dot here. And if we move it to 16 and bring it down, keyframe, there you go. Now we have the animation happening. Now, an important thing to remember is that, um, let's get this, let's do this. Now let's delete all the keyframes. If you want to delete all the keyframes, press shift F3, which is, or go window and then go timeline. Uh, there it is, timeline, dope sheet of curve editor. And you'll see all the things that have keyframes here. So just select them and press delete. And I don't know why there's a camera keyframes there as well. So we delete that. And now there's no keyframes. And now let's get the head. Let's say this small animation I want to do. This is an important thing I want to talk about the types of keyframes. If we get this head and we keyframe it here, and then we go to the last frame and let's rotate it all the way around. So it's all the way here and let's press keyframe. As you can see, the head now rotates. But if we press play, it'll rotate, and then it kind of stops. So it's not a continuous motion. And that's because of the type of keyframes we have. Uh, by default, if we click, that's not here, it's in mode, and is it project settings or something? Project info, nope. I just press control D. <laughs> I think it's an edit project setting there, there it's here. So here, um, your key interpolation is a spline. And what this is, is we go back to our, to our timeline thingy. Here we can, we have this keyframe and you can see, well, you can navigate here just like a viewport, just alt and right click to zoom into it out. If we switch to this, here we have three modes. We have dope sheet, which is just these keyframes, or we have curve editor. And if we click on this guy, and we press H to focus in, we can see that the curve starts slowly, then accelerates and then slows down. 
Um, if you wanted this to move in one continuous motion, so it doesn't stop, because basically like imagine if it's a flat line, like if that means uh, the rotation is just 360 degrees. Like if we get this guy and let's open our actual rotation B, there you go. If we move this guy just horizontally up, then you can see it'll be just a flat line because along the bottom we have time. So we have, you know, we have these frames going from zero to 90. And this is the, the rotation that we're doing. And if you just have it as a straight line, it's flat. So the flat of the line is the slow of the movement. So what we have by default is a thing called easing, which means the line starts flat and then goes closer to vertical, which means it moves faster. And then it goes flat again. The flat of the line, the slower something moves. So for example, if we press play here right now, you see it kind of slows down, it goes a bit faster, and then it'll slow down again. Now, if we, if we pull this thing out all the way like this, you'll see that it starts very slow and then it speeds up and goes vroom, and then stops there again. So if we want this to be continuous, we have to make these lines point towards each other so that they're, you know, as straight as possible. And now if we press play here, by the way, I press play, just F8 on the keyboard or just this button here. See now she just continuously rotates. You don't even notice when the animation stops. Um, there's also an easy way to do this is you just select these guys here and you press this button. And then see now there's no handles. Now it's just straight from one point to the next. To illustrate this a bit better, or maybe just a, another example of this. Um, let's, for example, get her leg here. Let's move this default. Let's go to the zero keyframe. Let's keyframe it here and then move it to 20. And let's move it up and keyframe it. And then on, let's say 32, we're gonna make a stomp it back down. So make it back to zero and keyframe it. Now, if you press play, you'll see that it goes up and then it doesn't really stomp. It just kind of, it moves faster, but it just kind of eases in. That's because it slows down before it hits it. And sometimes this is good. Sometimes you want things to slow down before they get to a position. So let's go back to our cut frame. But the thing is we don't really want it to slow down. We want it to hit full force. So let's get our position Y here. So we want it to like really, we want it to like accelerate from the top and then go thunk. So if we press play now, see up and bam, see? So that's stomp, that's a stomp. So that's how you, what different, key, and you can switch the types of keyframes. So if you want, you can just make these all, you can select these and go linear. And now it'll just move up and then down. So there's no kind of, there's no easing. It's a very mechanical move, which is not very natural, but it's useful if you want to have something rotating continuously, like our lovely head here. So it just keeps on going. Brilliant, right? So that's the important stuff about keyframes that I want to cover here. Also, I mean, oh, there's so much stuff in the timeline that I could talk about. Um, but I'm trying to keep this to 10 minute chunks because, you know, you should try this and practice this. Um, oh yeah, useful thing about keyframes. Let's say you have a whole bunch of keyframes here, right? If you click and drag on this empty area, not where the numbers are, but in this little underneath this line where the keyframes are, you can click and drag and select a bunch of keyframes and you can move them all together. And if you look at these little gray boxes on the sides, you can actually scale them in and out. And if you right click on it, no, not right click, the right click. Can't see because yes, there's, um, let's move this guy up. If you right click on it, you can actually go to edit and you can reverse the sequence. Boom. Then you have the opposite happening. So that's a useful little hint there. And also here, you'll notice the timeline, actually very important thing with the timeline. You only see objects right now, which have keyframes. This is because you have this view and you have these links here. So basically, depending on what version of cinema you have, the defaults might be different. So what I would recommend is go to your show and click on this top bar here, this little gray line, and it'll undock this and keep it here and then go view and link and click on the same bar and undock it. <coughs> Maybe you can even dot them together. Um, this one should be, there you go. So now you have these buttons and you'll see, for example, if I untick show animated, see now you see all the objects in your scene, even the ones that don't have keyframes. Let's keep that on. That's kind of useful, but also link here is useful because uh, link view to object manager means it only shows you what you have selected. So if you have 
the head selected, it'll show you the information about the head. And if you have the leg selected, show you the information about it. But this isn't useful sometimes because in the dope sheet here, you sometimes want to see all your stuff. So I would turn off this link view to object manager because sometimes you want to select all your keyframes from all your animated objects and move them you know, together. Like you want to shrink the animation or grow the animation. So yeah, I think that's the most important stuff about keyframes in Cinema 4D. So remember that you keyframe stuff by selecting it and then in the coordinates tabs or in the parameters, you click on these dots to make them keyframe. Um, I think that's pretty much it for now. If you want to get the free rigs, make sure to check out my website, ace5studios.com or just ace5.cc if you want to use a shorter URL. Um, also check out, I have a lot of premium rigs here. I have Mia, which you saw in this video, and I have 5J character pack and I have arms and legs pack and Maria's selling a cute little cats and spiders and stuff. So check that out. That's the ball building kit, even a light kit to make your life easier. 5J kids, anyway, lots of stuff. Also tutorials. And also, if you like this video, make sure to check out the intro to animation video, which is a link right here or in the bio, or wherever it is, because it'll explain, you know, the beginning steps of animating a character. So this is Alexei from Ace5 Studios, and I'll see you next time.